shall we? Turn over, if you will, 322, the song they've been playing. That's Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. And we got to stand up to do that. So let's stand up together. Let's sing 322, Stand Up for Jesus. Brother Bible, lead us. On that verse together. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Yes. tonight good to see you in church on wednesday night and uh good to see some of you back who've been out sick and glad you're back with us this evening and uh we praise the lord for that and uh let's bow in prayer together shall we father thank you for this evening thank you for another opportunity to gather together here this evening lord thank you for touching the bodies of some of these here tonight lord that are back with us after having been out on sunday we thank you lord for your healing grace and healing power and lord we do pray for those who are still out this evening you'll put your healing hand upon them lord raise them up to be back with us very soon father we do bow now at the beginning of our service and ask you to meet with us tonight the promise is that when we gather together there you'll be in the midst and so lord bless our fellowship time together here the songs we sing help us to sing from our heart to you Lord, may you be pleased with what goes on in our service together here this evening. Then open our understanding as we open up your word tonight. And Lord, uh, allow us to behold wondrous things out of your word this evening that will help us to be more effective servants of the, thine, Lord, that will have a, a closer relationship with thee because of the result of being in church here this evening. So control the service for your honor and for your glory in Christ's name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. As you're finding your seats, let's turn to 321 together. 321, just one page back. Sound the battle cry, see the foe is nigh, raise their standard high for the Lord. Let's sing that first together. Sound the battle cry, see the foe is nigh, raise the standard high. Bye. 
letters from the six dads missionaries to West Africa dear friends the last week in February I had an occasion to speak with a man about Africa we met in the Staples office supply store when I was getting some materials for Africa I was buying several desk planners for our national pastors and some for students in the University in Ghana the store clerk saw me take them and asked why I needed so many so I told him I was taking them with me to Ghana we had a good conversation that was overheard by a black gentleman. When I went to pay for the calendars, the black gentleman asked if he could pay for me since I was a missionary. I allowed him to do that, and then we went outside and I was able to talk to him about the Lord. The man was originally from Sierra Leone. He trusted the Lord in the parking lot of the store. I am grateful to be able to win Africans to the Lord in America. Please, please pray for a house to rent in Ghana. Pastor Sampson is helping locate a suitable place. Pray for our planned university seminar and revival in March. Also pray for our planned prison meal in April. We do not feed as many inmates at Easter, but it is going to take place the first week of April. Also, praise the Lord for the Wall Clipper Corporation. They donated six rechargeable hair clippers for us to take to Ghana. We hope to teach some of the inmates barbering so when they are released, they can start a self-sustaining job. We also have a plan to help Pastor Sampson with a building project in Ghana. Pastor Sampson has been a faithful servant of the Lord, and we trust the Lord to enable us to build a permanent facility for his church. We have several invitations already to also travel to Nigeria and do some revival meetings with our churches there. Thank you for keeping us on the line for the Lord in Africa, the six stats. That's a good report, isn't it? And uh, good to hear from them. Get your prayer guide out. Anybody need one tonight? Everybody get one? If you need one, put your hand up. The ushers will get it to you. All right. Very good. Look at the coming events on the back. We'll start there, of course. Uh, the RU Inside tomorrow night down at the CRC prison. Appreciate you praying for that service, 6.30 to 8.30 on Thursday evenings and Friday night with our RU group right here uh, in the church on 7 to 9 p.m. on Friday night. Our Saturday soul winning and bus visitation at 10 a.m. here. And then this Saturday uh, from 11 to 3 is the three-on-three -three basketball tournament over at Urban Crest. And uh, be praying for that. Pray that the, some of the kids have got flyers in the public schools and such and be praying that'll be a good turnout there and that'll be a good opportunity to give the gospel to folks uh, not only the ones who come to play but the ones who come to watch them play as well they all get the gospel that day and you're welcome to come out and come over and support that and then the the cantata uh, on the fourth and the fifth lift him up six o'clock p.m. both nights and then resurrection sunday of course on april the fifth and the special offering we'll be collecting on that sunday appreciate you praying for those things on the inside uh, praise reports for the folks at the prison last week and those who received Christ their Savior. Uh, received 7-Eleven so far for the bus part, and the bus part came in today. And uh, Brother uh, Taylor and Brother Campbell have uh, got everything off the bus, and it's ready to go on. And uh, so they've been working diligently at that for the last several days, and now they're ready to put the part on. And uh, so you'll be praying for that over the next several days, if you would please. We appreciate that. And then, of course, the church ministries, and uh, lift those up in prayer, if you would, please. And then uh, many, many health needs that are listed here. Uh, Brother Paul Lamprecht was uh, taken over to Doctors West this afternoon. Uh, Paul, is, as you know, has uh, fallen a few times at home, and recently when he fell, he broke his hip and went and had surgery, and they've put him into Columbus Health Care for rehabilitation and such, and he got one of those dizzy spells again and the blood pressure dropped real low and stuff like that so they took him over to the hospital and they've done blood work and I think waiting on that those results and such to try to figure out what is what's causing this 
that's what caused the falls before get, get real dizzy and then lose his balance and uh, they got to figure out what's going on with that. So keep him in your prayers and wisdom for the doctors there to figure that out, if you would, please. And then if you'll add on to that list, um, uh, this is uh, from the poll labels. Uh, their son-in-law, Victor Flores, had, he had complete shoulder replacement, complete shoulder replacement surgery. So uh, pray for him. Was that today? Yesterday? All right. So pray for them and the healing and the rehabilitation that will come along with that and uh, so keep Victor Flores in your prayers if you would and uh, and pray for Sally Spargrove too Sally's been sick with the flu or something for it's almost two weeks now so uh, keep her in your prayers we uh, need her to get well for the cantata and uh, so uh, be praying for her and uh, her health all right then praying for those in authority and uh, the, the list there of, from the national leaders on down to our local leaders. These battling cancer, continue to lift them up in prayer. Uh, these on our salvation list who need to receive the Lord as their Savior. I want you to continue to pray for them and our military, uh, those defending us and our freedoms. And then, of course, uh, our missionaries highlighted by the six dads tonight uh, who are still home right now on furlough, but preparing to head back. Uh, to Nigeria. All right. We're going to go to prayer. Brother Wallace, I want you to come tonight. Brother Bob, if you would, please. And he'll lead us in our prayer this evening. And uh, let's unite our hearts together in prayer. And as he leads us audibly, pray along silently with him. And uh, let's pray together tonight for these needs. All right, Brother Bob. Let's pray. Father, as we come to your throne room tonight, we've heard a lot of sermons, messages, teaching on the power of prayer, the, the uh, attitude that we ought to have when we come to your throne room. And Lord, as we humble ourselves, we, we come with boldness knowing that we're your children, but we also come humbly knowing who you are. Lord, you're a great God, and if it were not for you, the times we've spent in prayer would just be wasted. It's because of you, because of your son Jesus and what he did on the cross, uh, making a way for us to have an intercessor that would take our prayers. And no matter how foolish we might think they are, and no matter how small we might think they are in our flesh, Lord, we know that the intercessor is there taking those prayers to you perfectly. So, Lord, as we pray, help us to keep that in mind, that uh, how great a God we do have. Lord, we know that you hear and answer prayer because your word has proved it over the years uh, and over the decades. Lord, of testimony after testimony, we do uh, pray for Brother Sigstad and other missionaries that are on the field. Lord, even though we're not there in the flesh and seeing what goes on every day, uh, Lord, we walk by faith and trust that, uh, Lord, their needs are being met because your word says that you will supply us our needs as needed. I heard a pastor say one time, we don't need anything other than our needs. And, Lord, you've promised to supply that for us. And, you are such a great God that you do sometimes give us our, our desires of our heart. So we pray for even the desires of our heart, Lord, and that they will give it to us perfectly. Lord, that the desires of our heart would be in tune with your will and that it would cause us to be a good testimony to you and for you. Lord, that you would use that testimony to draw men unto you. Lord, we do pray for the leaders of this country. Lord, in just a few months, we're going to be uh, voting for uh, president of our nation. And Lord, as we should be praying about that earnestly of uh, who you would want in there. And Lord, you, you, we, we say sometimes that you, uh, you are never surprised at what the next morning brings. But yet, Lord, uh, uh, we should still pray that the man that uh, would best be suitable for 
that job that uh, would uh, recognize a sovereign holy God of who he is. Lord, that's the person that uh, we should desire to have there, that uh, a person that would uh, know you as uh, their, your sa their Savior. And so, Lord, we uh, should pray for our leaders. We do pray for our leaders. I pray for the leaders now who are in control, and President Obama and, and the Vice President and the, the uh, uh, Senate and Congressmen of, the, of our nation. Lord, uh, we need to get back to... Uh, Lord, having people who have a heart for uh, uh, what is best morally for our country. And Lord, I just pray for each and every one that, Lord, their eyes will be open to the truth. I pray for these people who um, have cancer, Lord, that are on our list. And I, I know that you know each and every one, each and every uh, person on that list. You know exactly where they are right now. You know how to work through their families and through their lives. Lord, I would just pray that we would one day hear miracles of, of them being uh, uh, set free from that uh, deadly disease. And Lord, uh, I pray for the people who are on our salvation list, Lord, that many we are not even in touch with now, but we do keep them in prayer. We do keep them, uh, uh, Lord, in, in our minds and in our thoughts. And Lord, we don't know where they are, but you do. And Lord, uh, you died for them just as well as you died for any of us. And Lord, I would just pray that one day we would hear a good testimony of one of those people or many of them coming to know your son Jesus. Lord, as we uh, pray for Brother Lamprick tonight, I pray, Lord, that you'll give him uh, strength, that you'll encourage him, uh, the man of, of his age and going through what he's going through. And uh, uh, Lord, it's not easy. It's... Uh, it's, it's he needs your help and Lord we, we know that uh, you've promised never to forsake us never to leave us in, in any condition that we are in that we could ask for your help and I would just pray that you would settle his spirit give him patience and give him uh, the wherewithal that he needs to come through this trial and come, up, come out of it triumphantly and Lord I pray for Sally that you would help her to recover quickly Lord, that you would give her the strength to be able to get back in church and be a part of the cantata. Lord, uh, and uh, Lord, we will carefully give you all the thanks and praise for it. And Lord, thank you for the uh, CRC ministry on Thursday nights on, on, and our RU ministry on Friday. Lord, uh, continue to bless there. Continue to raise up leaders. Lord, uh, there may be somebody in our uh, under this roof tonight that is... Uh, uh, dealing with uh, whether you would want them to step up and be a leader or not. And Lord, I just pray that you would prick their hearts, give them encouragement, give them strength. Lord, give them uh, what they need to, to uh, have that desire to help people out. And Lord, to teach other people. Father, thank you for your word, most of all, because you are your word. Lord, thank you for our pastor, our pastor's family. Thank you for the family that we have here at Bible Baptist Church that has a desire to see you work in each and every one of our lives. And Lord, as our pastor comes and opens up your precious word, Lord, I know you've given him exactly what you would want us to have tonight. Now, may our spirits be ready to receive that, each and every one, individually, as you have promised. And Lord, to teach us and to help us mature and grow as your children. Lord, help us to listen carefully and, Lord, be willing to apply it to our lives as you teach each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Um, I'd like to, just real quick, if I may, Pastor, um, give a policy update. So we had uh, some exciting stuff happen today at the State House. How many have heard of the heartbeat bill? Anybody hear the heartbeat bill? The heartbeat bill basically says that um, the uh, baby is a viable human being um, at the time of the first sign of a heartbeat, which is generally in the six to eight week range. Um, many of us believe that um, life begins at conception, but this is a good start. And so um, the heartbeat bill 
We had uh, committee hearings the last four weeks, but it passed the uh, entire house today, 55 to 40. So we praise the Lord for that. And that was, uh, was an exciting, exciting thing. So um, be praying now. It goes to the Senate. That is the, um, that's going to be the tougher road to hoe. But uh, be praying for the heartbeat bill if uh, you think about it and uh, that your, uh, your senators might do the right thing. I will have to say, um, regrettably and sadly, um, nobody's state rep that is in this room voted for the heartbeat bill. That means they are not pro-life. All right, so just remember that in a couple years. All right, uh, 294, let's turn our hymnal again, 294. My faith has found a resting place, not in device nor creed. Let's all stand together as we sing. No other plea on that first together. My faith has found a resting place, not in device nor creed. I trust the Now make somebody else feel welcome. We'll come back and sing that last together. physician he heals the sick the lost he came to save on that last my great physician heals the sick the lost he came to save for me his precious blood he shed for me his life he gave i need no Be seated, if you will, and uh, we'll have the ushers come. They'll get our offering now tonight. We'll ask the Lord's blessing on our giving. Let's pray for the offering, shall we? Father, thank you for the privilege that's ours to give. We thank you, Lord, for how good you are to us and for the many, many blessings you bestow upon us. And, Lord, I pray you'll accept the gifts we bring back tonight. Lord, I pray that you'll 
use the offering for the furtherance of the gospel in this place. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your Bible now this evening, if you would. Let's uh, start in Luke 18, but I'm going to have you uh, put a finger in Luke 18. Let's have a finger in Philippians 4, then we'll look at one other place here as we start out tonight, all right? Luke 18 and Philippians 4, then we'll look at one other scripture to get us started off tonight, all right? Luke 18, and notice with me verse number 1, please. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. That's Jesus speaking. Men ought, what? Always to pray. Now look at first, uh, I'm sorry, Philippians 4, and notice, if you will, with me, verse number 6, where the Bible says, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God we're not to be careful or full of care about anything but we are to be praying about everything all right and then first Thessalonians a little further to your right there first Thessalonians chapter 5 and notice verse 17 very familiar verse the Bible says pray without ceasing Men out always to pray. We are taught to, to pray and uh, not faint. We're taught to pray without ceasing. We're taught to in everything by prayer and supplication. Uh, let our requests be made known unto God. All right, let's pray. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scriptures tonight and Lord, others that we'll look at this evening. As we come to the time of studying your word together, I pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts, open our understanding to this important matter of what hinders you from answering our prayers. Lord, we want to pray. We want to come unto you with our requests and our needs, our desires. And yet, Lord, oftentimes we do not receive answers. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to understand why we don't receive answers. And I pray the result of our lesson tonight, Lord, that there'd be many more folks who would not only pray, but have answers to prayer. So guide and direct our study this evening, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, so as we pray, you know, I would like to think all Christians pray. The sad truth is, though, very few would say I get consistent answers to prayer. I get consistent answers to prayer. Oh, there may be one every now and then. But there's not many people, not many Christians that would be able to enumerate for you answers to prayer. And we know this, God wants to answer prayer. Uh, prayer, as we said before, is not trying to overcome God's reluctance, but laying hold of His willingness. Uh, he said, and we'll talk about it Sunday in our Sunday school class, but if ye being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, 
Well, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask Him? Listen, God, God desires to give good things to His children. And He wants to do that. But what causes God to not answer our prayers? What is it that, 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 that causes Him to not give us what we're asking? Well, we're going to look at that this evening, all right? And uh, we're going to give you several of those hindrances to answered prayer. What is it that, that is a hindering God from granting the requests that we bring? All right, number one is this. Look at Psalm 66. Uh, Psalm 66. Psalm 66, and look with me at verse number 18, would you please? Psalm 66, 18. If you're there, you say amen. All right. Notice what the Scripture says. If I regard iniquity in my heart, what will happen? The Lord will not hear me. So the very first thing that can hinder uh, God answering our prayer is if I regard iniquity in my heart. Now that word regard is to, to love or to esteem or to practice. You ever, you ever heard somebody say, well, boy, I really know them. I hold them in high regard. In other words, I hold them in high esteem. I, 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 I think highly of them. And, and so what, what he's saying here is if we hold on to something in our heart that we think highly of that God says is iniquity, that God says is wrong, God says you can do that if you want, but I'm not going to hear your prayer. I will not listen to you when you pray. So if I hold on to that which God says is sin, my prayers won't be answered. Not what I think is sin but what God says is sin. So often we get that, well, I don't think this is so bad. I don't see what's so wrong. I don't see what's so bad. And we always preface it with that. You know what? Frankly, it doesn't matter how you see it. It doesn't matter how I see it. What does God say about it? That's why the very first principle, when you get into Reformers Unanimous, the very first principle of the ten principles is, if God is against it, so am I. What are we trying to do? See things the way God sees things. So we don't rationalize away uh, our behavior. And what we're doing is we're robbing ourselves of God hearing our prayer. And so we cannot regard iniquity in our heart. A young lady was saved, but away from God, running with the wrong crowd, living uh, uh, not the way she knew she should, and her father became seriously ill. She got her Bible, and she began reading her Bible, and came across John 15, 7 that we talked about last week. So if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Well, she saw that, ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So she took that promise and trusted it and prayed it for her daddy that God had spares life. However, her father died. She was mad and said God didn't keep his word. Well, her pastor at the time was the great Dr. Harry Ironside. Dr. Ironside asked her, what do you call someone who tries to cash a check that is not made out to them? She goes, well, that's forgery. He goes, okay. He said, that's what you've done. You're trying to cash a check. You're trying to cash a promise that wasn't made out for you. It wasn't given to you. He didn't just say, ask what you will and it shall be done to you. He said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you. He said, were you abiding in Christ when you were at the bar room last week? He said, were you abiding in Christ when you went dancing on Sunday evening instead of going to church? What right did you think you had to cash that check? It wasn't yours to cash. See, sin in your life will hinder prayer. Look at uh, Proverbs, you're in Psalms. Um, look at Proverbs 28, would you please? right after the book of Psalms is the book of Proverbs. Notice Proverbs 28. Here the Bible says, notice verse number 9, Proverbs 28, verse 9, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. God says, you turn your way, ear away from hearing the law of God. In other words, God is basically saying, if you refuse to listen to my word, then your prayer will be something I extremely, that will be extremely loathsome in my sight. 
Abomination is a stronger word than hate. It is, it is a putrid thing in the, in the nostrils of God. And God says, that's the way it is if you turn away your ear from hearing my law. In other words, you, well, I know the Bible says that, but. And then we want to say what we think, why we think it's okay for us to do that. Okay? And so it's not okay. It's, if God's against it, so am I. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. If God says it's not right, it's not right. And, and it will hinder us from getting our prayers answered. Look at Isaiah 59. Would you look there, please? Isaiah 59. You know, you, know, you know who's squirming tonight, right now? People who want to regard iniquity in their heart. People who want to hold on to something that they know God isn't right. They're, they're liking me to move on to the next point right about now. All right? And, and here's, here's Isaiah 59. Notice Israel here. Look, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Here, Israel's praying and they're not getting any answers to prayer. And you know what they're saying? The problem is on God's end. God's, God's hand is short in that he can't save anymore. He can, he's not as strong as he used to be. God's gotten old or something. Are they saying his ear's heavy and he can't hear? You know, you, you, you just can't hear like you used to hear. They, they think the problem's on God's end. What does God tell them in verse number 2? God says, Oh, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you, and He will not hear. He said, No, God says, No, the problem isn't on God's end of things. The problem is on your end of things. You are allowing sin and iniquity to cause it come between you and God, and God will not hear. He will not hear your prayer. So, how do you know? The heart is deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, look at Psalm 139. Will you look there, please? Psalm 139. Aren't you glad you have a Bible? Psalm 139. Psalm 139, notice verse number 23. Here's what you do. You pray what David prayed. Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Here's what David prayed. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. What you do is you, you get alone with God, and you get quiet before God, and you say, God, you search me. Anything there that doesn't need to be there, point it out to me. And wait on God. I, I would suggest you have something to write with and a piece of paper. Because when He starts talking, you want to write it down. And then you want to confess it and forsake it. And, and get rid of it. Put it out of your life. If that's the thing that's hindering prayer from being answered, from God hearing your prayer, man, get rid of it. Put it out of your life. And ask God to do the searching. He'll look better than we will. He'll, he'll notice things that we'll, we'll overlook. Okay? You, 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 always, you always, it's always good to have someone else. They tell you when you write things. Do you, should you proofread your own writing? No. You know why? You, 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 your mind just overlooks it. You always give to someone else to proofread it, and they'll find things that you don't see. It's like you telling your child, is your room clean? And they say, yeah, it's clean. And then you go look at it. And you find out their, their, their idea of cleaning the room and your idea of clean weren't the same thing. And, and by the way, sometimes when we think everything's clear in our heart and we invite God to take a look, His idea of being clear and clean is different than our idea of being clear and clean. And so search me, O God. So we want to we uh, make sure that we confess and forsake that sin. Don't regard iniquity in your heart. If God is against it, then so am I. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. Period. No discussion. No rationalization. If that's what, what God says, then that's what I'm going to do. All right, number two. Here's the second hindrance to prayer, and it's in 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 20. 1 John 3, verse number 20. The Bible says this. 
For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us, then if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him. We taught on this a while back because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. Notice, if our heart doesn't condemn us, then we can have confidence before God. Now, our heart condemns us. Go up a little further, verse 18. Well, let's go up a little further, verse 17. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, in other words, our heart condemns us, when we don't have compassion for the needs of others. When we don't, we shut up those bowels of compassion. And we become very indifferent to the cry of others. And so if I'm going to have the prayers answered that I need, that I desire, I have to be willing to meet the needs of others. I have to have compassion. A condemning heart can hinder me from having answers to prayer. Proverbs 21.13 says, Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. If I stop up my ears, I don't want to know what their needs are. I don't want to know what they have need. I don't want to help anybody. That's their problem. They, that's their bed. Let them lie in it. If I have that kind of indifferent attitude and I shut up that compassion, uh, God says, you'll cry and you won't be heard. You see, that's a, that's a condemning heart. God, God makes it clear here that when we, the, the way we show the love of God is we meet the needs of others. The willing love, the willing, sacrificial giving of yourself for the benefit of others with no thought of return. And that's how we, we do that. If I, desire, if I desire mercy, I have to show mercy. If I desire compassion, I have to show compassion to others. If I do not, my heart condemns me and I do not have confidence when I pray to God. In fact, God will remind you of people who you've not been willing to help when you could help. There are times you cannot help, and God knows that. We're limited at times, and there's times we're unable to help even though we'd like to. But you understand, we don't shut up our bowels of compassion. When I'm indifferent to the needs of others, I get a very harsh spirit. That's kind of where the church in America is. Church in America that gives one dollar per member per year to foreign missions. One dollar per member per year to foreign missions. No wonder we're powerless. Somebody recently said to me that they're, uh, they're, they found a church that um, is not big on taking the gospel overseas. They just want to reach. There's more lost in America than there are overseas. I said, are you kidding me? There's, there's almost three and a half billion people in this world that are over there that have never heard the name of Jesus Christ. They've never heard the gospel. They don't know anything about Jesus. Should anybody hear the gospel twice before somebody's heard it once? You have... You know, if somebody in America wants to get the gospel, they have many ways they can get it. You have many opportunities to get it. How, how selfish have we become? How self-centered have we become? See, that, that kind of thinking and that kind of attitude is a, is a uh, it, it makes it your heart condemning. God says you, you have to be willing to meet the needs of others and have compassion. You see, don't let your heart condemn. God, God says when you, give, when you give to others, then you receive from God. The old, the old uh, prayer, you remember? We, we go to God and we receive it. And then we go out and we pass it on to somebody else. And we go back to God. And he gives it to us. Go give it to somebody else. We 
go back to God? We pray. All of a sudden, it's shut off. What happened? I didn't give it. I didn't pass it on. I quit being the conduit, and it stopped with me. Hmm? See, God says, if you don't want your heart to condemn you, then you have to have a heart of compassion, be willing to help others. So it's my prayers won't be hindered if I regard iniquity in my heart. If I have a heart that condemns me, third one, Mark eleven, Mark eleven, Mark. Chapter 11. All right. Notice verse number 23, would you please? Mark 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, what church? Forgive, if ye have aught against any. Why? That your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven Forgive your trespasses. So what, what's the third thing that can hinder my prayers being answered? An unforgiving spirit. An unforgiving spirit. Again, you read that promise. What a great promise. Have faith in God. And God says, man, you have faith. You could say to this mountain, be thou removed, and it will move. You can be able to have faith in God and believe that you receive the things. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray... That's a great promise. But God says it's not for everybody. If I don't forgive another Christian, if I hold resentment towards others, if I have bitterness in my heart towards somebody else, then I cannot pray and expect answers. I heard the illustration today. As a matter of fact, I think it was today. It might have been yesterday, but it was on the radio, and some of you may have heard it. It was back in the days before there was really a, a cure for rabies and such, and a man got bit with a rabid dog. And he went to the doctor. They did the tests, and, of course, the doctor came in with the bad news. You, you, you have rabies, and you, you don't have long to live. It's going to be fatal. And he said, I'm going to give you a few minutes to absorb it, and he left the man alone. And he came back in a few minutes later and he said the man had a piece of paper out and a pencil writing some things down. He said, well, I'm glad to see that you've come to grips with what's happened to you and you're writing out a will or some last instructions for family members and friends. He says, a will? Last instructions? He said, nothing. I'm writing a list of people who I want to go bite. <laughs> hey. Some of you relate to that, I can tell. Huh? You know, you, 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 that's, a, that's a sad way to live. You know, living with malice and resentment towards others. That's why God says when you have all malice and anger, let that be put away from you. Man, it's a cancer that'll eat you from the inside, and it'll kill you. You, you can't enter into prayer with bitterness and come out with blessings. You can't enter into prayer with bitterness and come out with blessings. It's impossible. So make sure you're forgiving others. That's how important it is. There's nobody here that can afford. Would you agree? Listen, would you agree if you could do, if you could get by with just one sin a day, you're doing pretty good? Would you, would you agree with that? If anybody, anybody here go all day today and not sin yet? You want to you put your hand up now and we can name one on you? Or what? No. Now, if, I, if it was just one a day, that'd be pretty good, but that'd be 365 sins in a year. And in, and in what, three years, over 1,000 sins. 
in 10 years, you'd have 3,000, almost 4,000, some sayings. Over a lifetime, say 30, even 30 years. Think about that. 30,000 sins. 70 years, 70,000 sins. You don't need God's forgiveness. And that's just one a day. Most of us aren't there yet. And we don't need forgiveness of God. We can go ahead and carry grudges. We can have something against somebody else and just carry it along with us and think we're going to pray and ask God to forgive us. We may be in for a surprise when we get to heaven and see sins that were never forgiven. So we have to be willing. Unforgiveness can hinder our getting our prayers answered. Let's go to number four. Go to the book of James, please. James chapter four. James chapter four, right after the book of Hebrews. James four. Verse number 3 says, Ye ask and receive not. So you're asking and you're not getting any answers. Why? Because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. So number 4, the reason is selfishness. God, you know what? God loves us too much to give us everything we ask. There's not a parent here that gives their child everything they ask for. Because some things they ask for are pure selfishness. And they're just asking to consume it on their lusts. And God help us, but that, that's what James says we're, we have a tendency to do as well. There is no promise in the Bible attached to the prayer of selfishness. When you're selfish, you don't get an answer. Well, preacher, I've been praying for a million dollars. Boy, what I could do if God would give me a million dollars. I've had people say, boy, preacher, I win that lottery. You know, it's, it's you know, so many millions of dollars. I'm going to give half of it to the church. Let me ask you a question. Do you give half of what you earn now to the church? You realize, you realize that you won't all of a sudden get generous just because you won money? In fact, it usually goes the other way. Books have been written about lives have been ruined by people who were lottery winners and got all kinds of money. And they found out that that generous spirit turned into a very selfish spirit. And they end up blowing it. Are you bringing glory to God with the $100 you have now? Then you probably wouldn't. If you are, you'd bring glory to God with a million dollars. But if you're not bringing glory to God with the $100 you got now, you're not going to bring glory to God if you had a million. You'll be, if you're selfish with your money now, you'll be selfish if you had more. Remember the, the famous quote, wasn't it Nelson Rockefeller? They asked how much, how much money's enough, and he said just a dollar more. Just one more dollar. Uh, just a little bit more. George Mueller prayed in over $7 million in his lifetime, and that was back in the 1800s. That, that's a lot of money. How did he do it? He did it just the way we did earlier. He did it for the orphans. <laughs> he prayed it in and gave it out. Prayed it in and gave it out. It didn't stick to him. He prayed it for others. And God, God used him as a conduit. It flowed through him to other people. God can grant it when it's used for His glory. And it said, He said, it's not just consumed upon your lust, your, your desires. Just something that, that you want. It really doesn't have anything to do with God. It's just something I'd like to have. And there are some things, by the way, Mom and Dad, you know this, there are some things your children don't need to have. They don't need to get everything they want. There used to, be, used to be something we called a kid who got everything they wanted. Yeah, a spoiled brat. Huh? Remember that? It's a spoiled brat. Why? Because he's never told no. He got everything he wanted. He just, and so whenever he didn't get what he wanted, then he'd throw a fit. Throw a tantrum. So selfishness. We have some Christians who are that way. 
and they get upset at God and mad at God when God doesn't answer their prayer. But if they looked carefully, they'd find out it was a prayer of selfishness. They just wanted it for them. It had nothing to do with God. Selfishness. What are the hindrances to answering our prayer? We said the hindrances are regarding iniquity in my heart, my heart condemning me, not having compassion on others, an unforgiving spirit, selfishness. Now let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. You're there in James. Just keep going to your right to 1 Peter 3. Here's an here's a interesting passage. The Bible says in verse 1, Likewise ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they may also, or also may be, they also may be without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be the outward adorning of plating of the hair or wearing of gold or the putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorn themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together the grace of life. So it's given the whole information here about how a wife ought to behave towards her husband, how a husband should treat his wife, and what's the end result of all that? What's the last sentence of verse 7? That your prayers be not hindered. Did you know your family relationships can hinder your prayer? When a husband and a wife are in one mind and one heart, they can pray and be confident God will answer. But when there's strife and discord and discontentment and anger, then prayer will be impossible. So, well, we just fight like cats and dogs. Well, I got news for you. God doesn't hear the prayers of cats and dogs. Sorry, you pooch lovers. It ain't happening. So husbands and wives, you understand that, that how you treat one another affects your prayer life. Your prayers are hindered if you're not, husbands, if you're not loving your wife as Christ loved the church. If you're not doing what, what the verse says here, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and being heirs together the grace of life. I got news for you. The, 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 the women who want to push the women's liberation movement is, are not putting women forward. They're putting women backward. What elevates women is Christianity and puts them in a place of honor and puts them in a place of respect and puts them in a place of beauty. We're heirs together the grace of life. This is particularly interesting too in the first part of the chapter is speaking probably about a husband that does not know the Lord and how a wife can win that husband not, not by what she says but by how she lives and, and one of the greatest weapons you'll have with a spouse that is not saved or a spouse that is not living for God is the weapon of prayer and to have that weapon available you have to have the proper treatment of the husband and the wife Make sure you're living as you ought to live. Now, let me just point out, God is letting, him, letting you know here that they're going to behold your chaste conversation. That's the way you live, not just the way you talk. Coupled with fear, verse 3, your adorning is not the outward adorning of the plating of the hair, the wearing of gold, or putting on of apparel. Some people take that as, oh, you should never fix your hair up or wear any jewelry or anything like that. Well, if you take that, then you don't wear any apparel either. So that can't be what that's talking about. He's saying that's not the main attraction. Ladies, nothing wrong with wearing those things, but that shouldn't be the first thing people notice. What should they notice? It says they should note it, the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corrupt, will believe in the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Here we go, which is in the sight of God of what? Great price. God says, well, I tell you what's of great price to me is your spirit. What kind of spirit do you have? 
And what God will use in the life at home, ladies, what God will use in the life at home is your spirit. Not your outward looks. He'll use your spirit. What people ought to notice about you is your spirit. And, and, and the, the hidden man of the heart, which is the, the new man that the Lord gives you when you become a new creature in Christ. And it talks about how the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorn themselves. Hey, hey, follow, follow the examples. Follow the examples of the older ladies. You've heard me say this many times in this church. You ought to, if I was a younger lady in my teens or 20s or 30s, I'd look at some of the ladies in their 50s and 60s and 70s, and I'd say, I, I'm going to find me an older lady, and that's who I want to, that's who I want to pattern my life after. I want to learn. The Bible says the older should teach the younger. Now, there's something that is already understood there. That is, the younger should want to be taught. And the younger should want to learn from the older. And so, that's, that's an important part. Family relationships. We've heard me say before, uh, children, children, you don't obey your parents, huh, you, you, you're going to have a hard time getting your prayers answered. As God says, children, obey your parents. And again, go back to go back to number one tonight. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't hear me. God says it's right. Doesn't matter what you think is right or not. You obey mom and dad. Does it mean mom and dad are always right? No. But it's right for you to obey. Because God says it's right. All right? So family relationships can hinder prayer. All right? And then let's go to the last one. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Back to the book of James. All right? James 1, verse 6 and 7. The Bible says, well, verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The sixth hindrance to getting answers to prayer is a lack of faith. A lack of faith. Wavering here is unbelief. Unbelief. We're, we're, we're wavering. We're not sure that God's really going to answer the prayer. We're not sure that God will give us what He's promised. Once you Listen, when God's made the promise, God will keep His promise. All His promises are yea and amen. And He'll keep His promises. So we pray with a life that is right in God's sight, with a faith in God that believes His promises and knows His will. Because we know that if we ask according to His will, He hears us. And if He hears us, He'll grant the petitions that we ask of Him. But it only happens through prayer. What does the devil like to do? Cast doubt on the Word of God. And He'll get you to start doubting God's Word. Now, let me, let, me, let me address something here. Somebody has asked me, I think it was Diane. Diane's not here, but maybe she's watching. She asked me the question, you know, growing up a lot, she said, we always heard people pray, and they would always use this phrase, if it be thy will. If it be thy will, heal this person. If it be thy will, do this. If it be thy will, do that. Is it okay to pray, if it be thy will? Here's... here's I think at times it's a cop-out for us to pray if it be thy will. You know, why? you know why we have to say that? Because we don't know his will. You know why we don't know his will? Because we don't know his word. And rather than study to show ourselves approved unto God and study to know the word of God so we'll know the will of God, we find it easier just to say if it be your will. When if we studied the Scriptures and searched the Scriptures, we could know the will of God. In fact, we have a prayer partner called the Holy Spirit. Look at Romans chapter 8. Would you turn there, please? Romans chapter 8. Here it says, likewise, verse 26, Romans 8, verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. 
But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts, who searches the heart? Yeah, we just said that in Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. So God searches the heart. Listen, so God, who searches the heart, knows what's the mind of the Spirit, right? So he knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit, he, maketh intercession for the saints. How? According to the will of God. How can, the Spirit, how can we know the will of God? The Spirit can reveal the will of God to us. The Spirit can give us what God's will is. Who? Holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. All, all Scripture is given by inspiration. It's breathed out by God. The breath of God is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is innocent. It's God the Holy Spirit that was the author of the book. Can He reveal the will of God to you and me? He certainly can. But it's not magic. It's not just, it's not easy. In America, we like easy. We don't like diligence and study and comparing Scripture with Scripture and being diligent in studying the Word of God and seeking the, seeking the uh, listen, laboring in the Word to find the will of God. It is so much easier to just say, Lord, if it be your will, do that. If I'm telling God to do what He wants to do anyway, why am I praying? What's the use? If I do, if God just, does God really need my permission to do what He wants to do anyway? No, He doesn't. But all through the Scripture, He He, he lets us know. Listen, we can know the will of God. We can know the the mind of Christ. We're supposed to have the mind of Christ. But it comes back to knowing the will of God. You you can say see we talked earlier in another message about praying the promises of God. Take the promises that God has made. Why don't we pray the promises of God? We don't know them. That's why we got to make little bracelets up to say, what would Jesus do? Why do we have to ask that question? Because we have no idea what he'd do. Because we're ignorant of the book that he's written. If you know this book, you'll know what Jesus would do. You can't separate the living word from the written word. They're, they go together. And you won't know one without knowing the other. You don't have to guess what Jesus would do. The Bible will tell you what he'd do. You have to guess at, 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 at you have to guess God's will. You, you have the Word of God and you have the Spirit of God who wrote the Word of God who can help you to pray according to the will of God. Don't, don't just rely on that. Don't just fall back on that as an easy way out. Ask God to reveal His will to, will to you. And then begin to search the Scriptures. If you need help, go to someone else who knows the Scriptures and has searched Scriptures and say, do you have any help on this with the Scriptures? Is there a Bible principle that can help guide me in this decision I'm about to make? And, and, and get, get help and seek it. Because faith, when it says we, we pray with faith and faith that doesn't waver, what is our faith in? It better be in the Word of God. My faith better be in that book right there. In fact, uh, one day I was out visiting, you know, and, and the person at the other side of the door said, your problem is you're basing everything you believe on that one book. I said, you're right. And I got a message I preached on that called that one book. Because <laughs> that's what we're basing on, aren't we? Why are you in church on Wednesday night? Because of that one book. Why are you living the way you're living? Because of that one book. Hey, why do we pray the way we pray? Because of that one book. What are the promises we pray? They're from that one book. And so that, that's where our faith lies. It has to have the right object. Uh, my faith isn't in my faith. Oh, your faith will carry you through. Your faith in what? Faith isn't just something floating out there on its own. Your faith has to have an object. My faith is not in my faith. My faith is in the Word of God. You know, I'm saved. I'm saved by grace through faith. Faith in what? Faith in God's Word. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I have faith that that verse is true. And I'm basing my salvation on it. That as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. 
I'm believing that. My faith is in the Word of God. Your prayer, the lack of faith really comes from a lack, oftentimes a lack of knowledge of the Word of God and a lack of knowing His promises. So those are the hindrances we have. And listen, God can take care of every one of those hindrances. Did you notice, though, every one of those hindrances are not on God's side of things? They're on either side of things. Because if, we, if we're unwilling to take correction on our end of things, then God has to keep the windows of heaven buttoned up. And He can't give us what we're asking. And how about you? I need answers to prayer. I need God in my life. We need Him. to. There's things we have to have that he, only He can provide. And only He can give. And so I pray if any of these areas God has touched your heart about tonight, You'll take care of it. You'll obey what God's put his finger on this evening. And take away, remove the hindrance. So you can not only pray, but you can have answers to prayer. You can see God work on a daily basis in life in answer to your prayer. Let's stand together for prayer, shall we? Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the attention of everyone this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the clear teaching of your word when it comes to prayer. Lord, forgive us for oftentimes allowing these things we spoke of this evening to hinder you from answering our prayers as you would like to. We tie your hands. You're unable to give us what we're asking. And I pray, Lord, that each of us would be willing to ask you to point out things that in our life that might be hindering you hearing and answering our prayer that, Lord, all of us could have that open communication. And there's nothing between our soul and the Savior. We love you, Lord. Thank you for being a God who hears and desires to answer our prayer. Lord, I pray you'll help us now to go from this place and that we will be what we ought to be in this world. That others would see Christ in our life. Lord, help us to give the gospel to someone this week. And do our best to see someone trust Christ as their Savior. Lord, bring them to church on Sunday and give us a, a wonderful Lord's Day. And bless the, the, the service tomorrow night at CRC, the RU service Friday night, the soul winning and bus visitation on Saturday, the three-on-three -three tournament. Prepare our hearts for what you have for us on the Lord's Day. And Lord, I'll thank you for it. Thank you again for the wonderful time tonight with the people of God. Thank you for a wonderful Savior and a wonderful salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray these things. Amen. 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 Let's sing together. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? All right, let's sing it together. Hey, isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? God bless you. You are dismissed. Choir, come right on up.